Okay, let's do a vector addition example. Uh, I, I'll assume you've already looked at vectors and stuff, so I'm just going to go ahead and do an example. Um, okay, so let's suppose that you're flying a plane and there's no wind. Okay, I'm just completely making this up. And so you're going from uh, city A is right here, and city B is right there, and then you're going to end up at city C. Okay, and so let's say uh, going from A to B, I'm just going to write this in a different way, A to B is going to be, uh, give me a number here, 100 kilometers, and uh, this is north, so let's say that this is, um, let's say 30 degrees, uh, east of north. Okay. And then let's say B to C is, I'm going to say 120 kilometers and like this. So let's say that's about um, 10 degrees south of west. Okay. So this is something that you might see um, when you're flying your plane, you know. Okay. Uh, so <clears throat> the question is, if you fly from A to B and then B to C, how far is it to go back to, to city A and what direction would you have to fly? Okay. So um, that's what we want to find. So how do we do this problem? Well, this is a vector addition problem because if I look, let me erase these lines. Here I have, I'll call this, um, what should we call that? R1. That's the vector R1 because it's displacement. We, we commonly use R to represent a displacement. So, And then here's R2. And then this is R3. Well, if you use your normal algebraic or geometric vector addition properties, you can see that the following is true. R1 plus R2 equals R3. Because if I take these and I add, R, here's vector R1, I put R2, the beginning of vector R2 at the end of vector R1, then the result will be from the end of R2 to the beginning of R1. That's how you do it. Uh, that's how you do it. And now we want to find vector R3, so we just have to, if we can find, somehow represent vector R1 and R2, then do a vector addition problem, uh, we could find that. Now, um, I, I find a lot of people will try to take this problem and just use, oh, it's a triangle, I'm going to use some, just some, you know, the law of sines and cosines or something like that. And that's valid. But if you, if you do this a different way, um, it's going to save you some time and frustration, especially if you have, you know, three or four vectors that you're adding. Okay. So I want to get these vectors R1 and R2. I want to represent them in a different way. So to represent vectors in components, I need to have an X and Y axis. Um, let me just say that that's X and that's Y. So I want to represent the uh, R1. Let's start with R1. I want to say R1 is equal to R1 X X hat plus R1 Y Y hat, where X hat is a um, a unit vector in the X direction and Y hat is a unit vector in the Y direction. So if I drew that, it would look like this. Where this is R1 X and this is R1Y. Okay, so how can I find those two components? Those are scalar lengths of those two vectors. Uh, okay, so I know that this is 100 kilometers long, and I know that that's 30 degrees east of north, so I know that this is 30 degrees. So that is 
30 degrees, or you could say this is 60, it doesn't really matter. It all turns out the same in the end. So if I know the hypotenuse is 100 kilometers and that angle is 60 degrees, well, then, I mean, this is 60, a 30-60-90 a 30, triangle, but I already know the answer, but I'll, let's do it the long way like we didn't know a trick. So I could say um, the cosine of 60 It's going to be adjacent over hypotenuse, so it's going to be R1x over, I'll just call it R1, which is the movement. If I don't put the, the arrow over R1, that means it's a magnitude, the length of that vector. So R1x is going to be 100 kilometers times cosine of 60, and um, if you, if you do that in your calculators in degrees mode, you'll get 50 kilometers. And then um, R1y, um, now I need to find the opposite side of that. So I would just say, doing a similar thing, R1y is 100 kilometers sine of 60. And so that's going to be, um, well, let me just give it as a number because that makes people happy. Eighty-six point six. Kilometers. Now remember a couple important things. It still has units. Okay, don't leave off the units because that's just plain wrong. It's plain wrong. Um, Two, we need to think about the sign. Are these po in the positive x in the positive y direction or negative or, or mix? In this case, r1x is in the positive direction and r1y is in the positive direction. Okay, so I can go ahead and write uh, r1. Let me just use my uh, magic here. Fifty eighty-six point six. Kilometers. Okay, so now I have R1. Let's do R2. Okay, now R2, um, you can move a vector as long as you don't change the length or the direction. So it's like this. And so here I have R2x r2y and that angle is 10 degrees so r2x is just going to be the now here's a one thing you have to be careful of i find a lot of people just say oh if you want the x component that's cosine well it's cosine if you're using that angle okay if i had this angle even up here i could have drawn I could have looked at this triangle, and then I, I've used 30, but the x component would be sine. The sine of 60, or the sine of 30, and the cosine of 60 are the same thing. So it doesn't have to be that way. You just have to look at your triangle. And if it's the adjacent side, you use the cosine. So in this case, it's going to be uh, r2, which was 120 kilometers, times the cosine of 10 degrees. And that's going to be equal to 118 negative. And the negative didn't come in anywhere. I put it there. Because I know the way I drew my triangle that that's in the negative x direction. So it has to be a negative component. And then R2y is going to be um, 120 kilometers times uh, the sine of 6, 10, sorry. So that's 20.8 negative kilometers or kilometers. You could say it either way, I'm okay. But it has to have one of those units. So 
Uh, R2, let me write it up here, R2, the vector, is going to be negative 118 x hat minus 20.8 y hat, and then I'll put the kilometers right there. Okay, so now I want to find R3. R1 plus R2, and the, the beauty is once you get them into components, then this is just going to be equal to um, R1x plus R2x x half plus R1y plus R2y y half. So um, I can just add the components. R3, that's a 3, is going to be uh, 50 plus negative 118, so it's going to be negative 68, right? To make, yeah, that's right. And then the Y component is going to be 86.6 plus negative 20.8. So it's going to be 46, 45.8. Wait. R1 plus R2. Oh, I'm sorry. Rewind. No wonder, okay, let me write this down. I said that was uh, 45.8 y hat kilometers. So in the, in, the, in the first part I said this was r hat going this way. That's not true, it's that way, right? If I, if I draw, if I do r1 plus r2, the result is from the beginning of r1 to the end of r2. You should have caught me on that. It's really it's your fault, okay. Okay, and uh, I, you know how I caught myself. I had a positive y component, and I had that drawn down like that with a negative y component. That didn't look right, so that's how I figured out it was wrong. So that's my vector. Okay, but now let's say I'm flying a plane, or I want to give someone the, the instructions. I need to now say, well, how far is that? So the magnitude of r3 is just going to be the square root of r3x squared plus r3y squared, so that's just going to be 68 kilometers squared plus 45.8 kilometers squared, and then take the square root, and I get, let's see, 68, And I get 81.9, let's just call it 82. Um, what direction would that be in? Well, let me, let me find this angle right here, theta. So if that's my vector, then this is the x component, and that's the y component. And, and I know from my trig that tangent of theta is going to be opposite over adjacent, so it's going to be r3x over r3y. Now, the way I've drawn my triangle, these are positive values. I've already, I've already taken into account the negativeness of the x component um, by the way I drew my angle. So I don't, I don't need, I'll take that into account later. I don't need to put in values there. So to find theta, I would just take the uh, inverse tangent of R3x over R3y, so that would be 68 kilometers over 45.8 kilometers, and, and the units cancel, which is important because you can't take the inverse tangent of anything with units. So let's see. I said it was 68 divided by 45.8. And 
I get 56 degrees. So this angle is 56. So I could say um, in the end, C to B is going to be 82 kilometers. And if I had to describe that, uh, this is actually, I'm sorry, A to C. is going to be um, 82 kilometers and 56 degrees west of north. And then you can just go backwards uh, the same distance in the opposite direction. Okay. I know it looks like a complicated problem, but it's important to, to practice it doing this way, breaking it into components. Um, because it gets more complicated, and you use this a lot in both the first semester and the second semester of physics, so you really need to know how to do it, and you need to practice it.